Hello, today we are going to look at base plates. Along with the base plates, we are going to investigate a very little bit on the component catalog. So, if you click this icon, this dialog box will come up and you can put a search here base and hit enter and this is what comes up. Now, I can select that and you can see a little arrow. Click on that and use a small description. Also, you can right click that and then you can add it to your favorites. Uh, these are basic things uh, you have to investigate uh, various components. Not a lot of them are use, used on an everyday basis. This base plate is used, parallel connections are used, shear plate connection and full plate connections are used, bridging connection is used. After that, there are not too many connections which are used on an everyday basis. There are some fitting connections. There are only a small number of connections which are used out of the box like this. You can see if you see the Australian favorites are here. So if you go through this, okay, this cold road is all lapped is used very frequently. Clip angle is used in the US environment pretty, pretty very well. Full clip depth is used. Shear plate, uh, this is used. Tube gusset, this is a useful one when it is uh, can be used, but a lot of times you, it gives a approximate connection and then you have to modify it. Uh, same thing with these things. Bridging is definitely used uh, frequently. Cold roll overlapped is used frequently. This is also a similar case. Seating connection also gives a good connection uh, when uh, the connection is a seating type it just gives a starting point after that you have to edit uh, you sh should not think that these connections will give you a final output uh, pretty good it doesn't now handrails yes again same thing it gives a very good start after that you have to modify your connections a little bit you can also show like a list or an icon by clicking on this one And if you investigate this one, there are further menus here. A lot of them we are not going to cover today. Almost nothing we will cover today. You can record macros. Uh, you can explode a component. So, for example, this one is a component. So, if I right click here, you can also explode from here. But it gives an option to explode from here. Now, if this explode component has to come up, see explode component. This button has to be clicked in. If I click on that one, let's say, uh, select that, there's no explode component. This button has to be clicked in. We will also cover uh, some uh, basic custom component uh, later someday. And uh, there is some advanced version of that as well. Custom components to, to my experience is, uh, is a little very difficult to customize to a very useful situation you can do some basic and then you have to edit or for uh, similar situations you have to create different different with uh, uh, different parameters so for this column see this base plate is already done uh, so if you double click this uh, icon the properties of this uh, base plate comes up so the first page is a basic picture. Uh, so this shows the basic picture. What you put in there is uh, even today for me is a bit of a trial and error. I don't remember everything. So I see the drawing, what is required, and then I put parameters based uh, on the drawing. Not I. I do not get the base plate like this final one in the first attempt I never have got it so I will try things and the, until it, I get close and then sometimes I just edit the component if there, I don't have to repeat but in this case you can see uh, many places the same base plate configuration has to go or similar has to go so in that case it is worthwhile to spend some time setting up your parameters but if it's only one or two the time you are going to spend setting up these parameters is far in excess 
of uh, putting something like approximate editing it and getting it right and then copy from one column to the other that will be much quicker than trying to set up all these parameters and see there are many and uh, a lot of times <coughs> it doesn't make a lot of sense unless you spend a lot and lots and lots of time trying to understand what each parameter is about i do not think there is uh, in the australian context there is not enough benefit to spend that much time to set up all the parameters uh, proper so the connection comes proper say for example the column size changes you set up all these and the <coughs> base plate for the new column size may not be all right so in such situation what you do is you get edit the uh, explode it edit it, and get what you require that's much much quicker than trying to set all the parameters here now for or for all the connections so if you want a plate thickness of a thickness of a specific thickness you have to put the thickness here if you do not want it to be created at all you put t that value as zero so for example leveling plate is not shown here uh, base plate is shown see these are the questions i normally have what is le no leveling plate is it going to create or not i don't know <coughs> but the see the base plate name so the base plate name will be coming as base plate let's check that all right i double click that the base the base name was not given as base plate it was given as plate so of course it, it will come as plates now if i change it here it will come as base plate now if you look at the other parameters input default these holes if you require holes uh in the base plate to pour for air escape or to pour grout you have to give the di diameter of the hole and the position of the hole in this case we don't require because it's a small base plate but if the base plates are large we don't get that type of large base plates in the australian situation but in u.s situations the steel sides of the column sizes are very large and then you will have to put some holes here so instead of manually adding the connection will give you see all these things which you create with these macros can be done manually you can add a base plate you can add a rod you can add the washers you can create this grout etc uh, etc et but uh, one thing this base plate macro does pretty good is this grout if you want to do that grout manually it will take a long time so most of the time what happens with in my case i will create a macro to create the grout and then a lot of other things is manual now if you inspect the bolt tab it gives you certain distances okay this says okay 100 millimeters i don't even know what it is it is probably from end of the column to the first bolt uh, that is the bolt center to center distance that's the center to center distance that this macro goes pretty good so some of the things is pretty good plate edge distance it goes correct uh, this one you have to see what it is uh, change the value and see now the other thing which it does pretty good is the bolt so some base plate require a lot of washers a lot of bolts that this macro will actually go pretty good see the depths etc so how much stick out all this you have to set manually becomes uh, a lot time consuming so some of these things you can set to see the stick out how much you should stick out from here all that the macro will do so once you do all that you can apply this uh, take the base plate and pick a point down there and it puts the base plate let's do that in the previous class we have mentioned that uh, you should not use fitting cut to extent see this modeling is I would say wrong you should not use a fitting cut to extend see what he has done here is he has made the column only up to here and he has used the connection which actually puts a fitting cut in this case to bring the column up to the pad I would not do it it is not recommended the problem with that one is when Tekla reports the column length, uh, 
it could give an error. It used to give an error, and when Tecla doesn't recommend something, don't do it. Okay, let me first of all extend this plate so that it gets at least up to the column, uh, up to the pad. Okay, do not expand. Okay, so we got this column going into the pad. It should be the starting condition should be something like this. Now the base plate properties already apply, so I'm going to select this base plate, select the column, and then this basically tells what is the RL at which I am going to apply. So I am applying it to that, and then you can see the base plate is applied. And the top of the grout is at the top of the pad. Couple of other things which you might have to do is uh, maybe it requires a different weld. Uh, you can set the weld in the base plate macro here. So you go to welds <coughs> and you can set the weld sizes here. Similarly, the anger rod bolt sizes you can set here. So if you want just bolts and not rods, you can change it here and you get the bolts. Or uh, anger rods, modify. As you can take that type of end connections from this drop down box. So, for example, this is what we had, and then I select the connection, modify, it just becomes an anchor rod. I want a J bolt here, so I select that one and modify, it becomes a J bolt here. You have to put this A, B, C, D values here. Okay, and if you want a U bolt here, modify that. Now, these things, what are elements you want in the <coughs> anchor bolt you can select from here and apply also you can give what should be the color and the position numbers here see you can add prefix and numbers here we will come to numbering a bit later but that's what you can add here and also the material you can add any comment you want to add you can add that you have to you have to experiment with this one